In lesson 3, you will present the concepts of quantum mechanics. Now for some students, the ideas of quantum mechanics can be hard to grasp, so we've put together this set of demonstrations, hopefully to make the idea a little more concrete. The whole idea behind quantum mechanics is to describe the arrangement of electrons found in an atom. If we know the arrangement of the electrons in an atom, we can predict reactivity, we can predict how that atom behaves in the presence of other atoms. In quantum mechanics, there are four quantum numbers. I like to think about these four quantum numbers as being like the four chapters in a book. And this book tells us about the arrangement of electrons in an atom. Let's begin it and look at, take a look at each of these four chapters in our quantum mechanics book. The first quantum number, which is our first chapter in the book, is called the principal quantum number. The principal quantum number. The principal quantum number says that the electrons in an atom occur in layers around the nucleus of the atom. Now up to now we've been uh, working with models and you've been creating different uh, ways of describing uh, these atoms and we've just been kind of like showing these electrons as being in a single layer around the nucleus of an atom. The principal quantum number says that the electrons actually occur in layers or shells about the nucleus of an atom. What you might do next is show your students on the periodic table that you can write down the numbers 1 through 7 next to each series of, of the elements on the periodic table. Next to the hydrogen you can put a 1 next to lithium a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. These numbers represent how many layers of electrons are found in elements in each of those series of elements there. So the principal quantum number says that the electrons occur in layers and there can be up to 7 layers of electrons. To demonstrate that for your students I like to use an apple. Take the apple and then with a knife, you carefully cut right into the apple. Open it up. Inside the apple, you can show your students that it's made of layers. We've got the peel, then we've got the fleshy part of the apple, then we've got the core of the apple, and then inside that core, uh, this one's kind of hard to see, but there are the seeds of the apple. So an apple has up to four layers inside it. The principal quantum number says that there can be up to seven layers of electrons circling around the nucleus of an atom and that we can then utilize our periodic table here with those numbers down the side and it will tell us how many layers of electrons there are in any of the elements here on the periodic table. The second quantum number or the second chapter in our book that tells us about quantum mechanics, which tells us about the arrangement of electrons in an atom, is called the orbital quantum number. The orbital quantum number. Now the orbital quantum number says that the pathways that these electrons are traveling on are in different shapes. The orbital quantum number deals with shapes. Now there can be up to four different shapes of pathways found in the various atoms of elements on the periodic table. The first shape that we talk about is the shape of a ball, or more uh, sophisticated term would be spherical, or the S shape. So some electrons are traveling in a spherical shape as they move around the nucleus in the atom. So we have S for sphere. The second shape is pear-shaped pear shape. Now if you have some fresh pears or a plastic pear, uh, you can certainly use that to show your students. I use light bulbs here because they are indeed a pear shape. So we have the S was for spherical shape, P for pear, and you can go ahead and tell your students now that the pear shaped orbits occur in sets of twos or a pair of pear shapes. So we have P for pear, S was for sphere, now we said there were four shapes in all. The sh third shape is a dumbbell shape. 
dumbbell shape. So you can, if you can find one of these hand weights here, which is a small dumbbell, you can tell your students that the third shape is D for dumbbell. So we've had S for spherical, the ball. P was pear. And now we have D for the dumbbell shape. Now the fourth shape is given the letter F. F. And chemists have not agreed upon an actual shape for the F-shaped orbits. So what I do is I show my students a fish and tell them that this is only to help them remember that of the fourth shape is F-shaped. It's not shaped like a fish, but it's at least it gives them something concrete to think about when they're trying to re remember the four shapes of pathways that the electrons can be found in. So let's review here now. We said that the second quantum number was called the orbital quantum number. It says that there are four shapes of pathways that the electrons can be in. We talked about S standing for sphere. P was our pear shaped. D was our dumbbell shaped. And the fourth shape is, is given the letter F. And we just kind of give it the shape of a fish. The third quantum number is called the magnetic quantum number. Now before I tell the students more about the magnetic quantum number, I ask them to think about a compass. The kind of compass that you use to find directions. If you think about a compass, the needle of a compass is magnetized in order for it to react to the magnetic fields of the Earth. And therefore, the uh, compass, which is magnetism, can be used to help us understand the magnetic quantum number. The magnetic quantum number now applies only to the pear-shaped orbits. Recall we use the light bulbs to show the pear-shaped orbits. The magnetic quantum number says that the pear-shaped orbits exist in atoms in three different possible directions, like the directions on a compass. Those three directions are the X axis direction, the Y direction, which is up and down, or the Z orientation or direction, which is like going in and out of a plane. So the magnetic quantum number, which applies only to the pear-shaped orbits, says that they can exist in an X orientation, a Y orientation, or a Z orientation in space. The fourth quantum number, which is our fourth and final chapter in our quantum mechanics book, is called the spin quantum number. The spin quantum number. The spin quantum number says that the electrons that are traveling around the nucleus of an atom, whether they be in first layer, second, third, or up to the seventh layer, no matter what shape that they're traveling in or which orientation in space they're in, the electrons like to travel in pairs. They like to travel with a partner. So if we have these electrons here in this atom, let's count here first. We've got one, two, three, four of the red ones, so let's call those the protons. We've got four neutrons, and now we can count. We see we have four electrons. So this is atomic number four, which is beryllium, on our periodic table. Okay, so the electrons that are traveling in atoms of beryllium like to travel with partners. So as they move around the various different shapes, they travel with a partner. Now the second part of the spin quantum number says that within each pair, one of the electrons likes to travel in a clockwise direction one travels in a clockwise direction, so I'll just draw an arrow here to show that this electron wants to travel in a clockwise direction, while the other pair, other member of the pair, likes to travel in a counterclockwise direction. So it's spinning the opposite direction. So as the electrons move in pairs around, one is spinning clockwise, the other one's spinning counterclockwise. Now, if we had 
this is a, an a model of an atom of beryllium. Let's take away a one electron and let's make lithium out of it. So we're going to take away one each of the subatomic particles there. So we've got three, three, and three. We've got this one lone electron now and it continues. It will spin either clockwise or counterclockwise and in its pathway around the uh, nucleus of the atom. And we'll find in later lessons some interesting things about these single electrons, these lone electrons, and how they affect the reactivity of the atoms of various elements. Let's review now what we've learned about quantum mechanics through these demonstrations. First of all, we said that quantum mechanics was a way to describe the arrangements of electrons in various atoms which would help us then understand the reactivity or behavior of those atoms. We said there were four quantum numbers. We liken those four quantum numbers to being like chapters in a book. The first quantum number was called the principal quantum number. We use the apple to help us understand that one. Apples are arranged in layers. The principal quantum number says that the electrons are arranged in layers or shells outside the nucleus of the atom. We said there can be up to seven layers and then we on our periodic table we said that we can put numbers down the left hand side here of one through seven to tell us how many layers of electrons there are in these various elements on the periodic table. The second quantum number was called the orbital quantum number, orbital quantum number, and it describes the various shapes that the electrons are in. We said there was a spherical shape, and it was, an S was used for its notation. We said there was a pear shape. We used light bulbs. Uh, we said the pear shapes occur in pairs, and a lowercase p was the symbol for the pear shape. Then we said there was a D the dumbbell shape and then finally we said there was a uh, the notation of F given but chemists haven't come up with an or agreed upon an actual shape and since it was F shape that we just use a little fish to help us at least get a handle on what that shape was like so the first we talked about layers the second one talked about shape the third quantum number was the magnetic quantum number. It applied only to the pear-shaped orbits. Magnetic is like a compass that tells directions. The magnetic quantum number says the pear-shaped orbits can either be in the X orientation, Y orientation, or the Z orientation in space. And finally the fourth quantum number said was called the spin quantum number it says that the electrons like to travel in pairs or in partners as they go in their various shapes around the, the nucleus of the atom and it said one member of the pair spins clockwise and the other spins counterclockwise. So those are the four quantum numbers and these are just some little demonstrations you can use to make these concepts more concrete. The next activity you'll have option to do is called the dizzy electron game where you can reinforce this idea of the spin quantum number.